we have to say, though, that the club has effectively, in a de facto way, has been up for sale for about three years, ever since he pulled the plug on the £1 billion pound up, or the redevelopment of Stamford Bridge. The UK government also made it a little bit more difficult for influential Russian people to operate in the wake of the Salisbury poisonings as well. So he's kind of, he sent some hostility towards the UK government. There have been discussions about takeovers, but it's kind of come to a head now. There's no doubt about that. Uh, look, I, I want to be very careful. I'm not talking about uh, Roman Abramovich when I say this, but more generally about football, that sense that uh, it's been possible for years now for people coming from parts of the world where governance is not a top priority, let me put it no stronger than that, no more stronger than that, can buy a football club in the UK and it's part of their their reputational rehabilitation when they do that. And it buys them some protection as well, maybe back home. Uh, is what's happened in Ukraine and, and with Chelsea maybe... Is it going to be a, a moment where football thinks, actually, we need to get our house in order? Uh, yes and no. I mean, yes, you could say that. But then you have to remember when Roman Abramovich bought Chelsea for £140 million in 2003, the Premier League looks a lot different. The landscape looks a lot different. I'm not sure the people who were running the game back then were that interested in where money came from. I think that they will scrutinise it a bit more closely now. Having said that, you've had a fit and proper persons test in place now for over 10 years. And it's been largely exposed to be utterly useless. You've had some really unsuitable owners taking over Premier League clubs and Football League clubs as well. They've practically run the place into the ground. But in terms of Abramovich, I mean, you know, there's reports today that he's looking for between three and four billion pounds for the club. You're only going to attract a billionaire from a certain part of the world who will invite scrutiny again. It's going to be very tough to dispose of an asset just like that. And it's not exactly a seller's market if everybody knows that you've got to get out of town pretty quickly. It's a distressed sale. Exactly. And so £3 billion, pounds is the, which is the, the figure being quoted, I spoke to a contact in the last hour who tells me that he would think of, of taking maybe £2.5 billion. Pounds. Now, if you look at that, if you take the first figure of three, KPMG valued it very recently at about £1.5 billion. Pounds. If you add on the debt that he's leveraged against the club of £1.5 billion pounds as well, and you aggregate those together, then £3 billion pounds sounds quite sensible. Having said that, for context, the previous largest takeover, or even though it was done incrementally, was Manchester United, £790 million. Pounds. So it's a long way off that. You've also got the problem, Colin, of the stadium, as I mentioned a few moments ago, the redevelopment of the stadium. I mean, it was £1 billion. Pounds. This is the problem that London clubs have. In West London, QPR, Fulham, all these clubs have been looking yes. at getting new stadiums and they just can't do it. It's not that simple. And that's another... If you're going to spend £3 billion on, on Chelsea Football Club, you've got to find another £1 billion pounds to get a new stadium because it's not maximising the revenues right now.